Welcome, everyone. This is the Jenkins Governance Board meeting. It's March the 6th, 2023. Topics that I had on the agenda include news, action, oops, action items. Code of conduct reminder was one that I wanted to just bring up. And it's more for discussion, JIRA license changes and our continuing use of JIRA, CDF topics, and community activity. Are there any other topics that others want to be sure we add to the, to the agenda? Okay, then let's go ahead. So congratulations first to the Jenkins Project and being accepted as a Google Summer of Code mentoring organization. Special thanks to John Mark Messon, to Bruno Verachten, to Chris Stern, to Alyssa Tong, who are acting as organization admins this year. Uh, thanks also to the mentors or the potential mentors, uh, including Basil Crow, me, and others. Thanks very, very much. Uh, right now, it looks like there are far more, there will be far more application applicants than we have projects, and we will limit the number of projects by the number of lead mentors that are available. We want to be sure that the projects have high chance of success and a successful experience for the, the contributors, the new contributors, not just for the Jenkins project. Other announcement is that next this Wednesday, so two days from now, we will have a security release, including Jenkins 2.387.1, the first release of the 387 LTS line, 375.4 and 2.394. And then the February newsletter is being prepared. Uh, submit your, uh, your text. If you're part of that, please let's let, roll on it. Any other questions or comments on news? I have a question about the Google Summer of Code. Uh, I'm wondering why we have so many applicants this year. Is the program different? So uh, I think it's a factor of five more than last year. Do you know why? Or... I I don't I don't have a fundamental reason why. We've certainly been better organized this year than we were last year and better promoted but I have a suspicion that there must be active promotion of Google Summer of Code in the universities in India right now. And I think that's the primary catalyst, but I, I don't know for sure, Uli. Good question. Okay. Uh, Bruno, maybe you have other insights? I think this year Jean-Marc has taken his v vitamins or vitamins, um, <laughs> but other than that, no idea, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, great. All right. Okay, next topic then was on action items. So first item on the list, rework the press contact page. Alex, do you want to give us a report there? Yes. A couple of weeks ago, Gavin Morgan started a post on the development mailing list that he wanted to remove himself as point of contact from the press page from Jenkins.io. He submitted a pull request and this took place. And he is no longer a press contact on Jenkins.io. He also noted that he has been a press contact for a couple of years by now. And within the past couple of years, he received basically nothing but spam or was subscribed to a mailing list he never wanted to be in. So he came up with the idea that we probably should rework the press page and get rid of the individuals and rather focus on one single point of contact. He came up with the idea to use the press category on the forums, which I wasn't aware of before. So I submitted a pull request to Jenkins.io, which gets rid of every person and recommends to use the press um, press subcategory or whatever it's called on this course. Good. So that's in this pull request, I assume, Alex? Yes. Great. Okay, so what it's doing is, as you said, getting rid of a bunch of individual contacts, particularly this one, for instance, has not had involvement in the Jenkins project in over two years. So far better that we give a contact to some to a place where we can see it, where multiple people will see it and can act on it. 
Yes. Most likely given one uh, place that is act actually public available. So not something like an email inbox that possibly gets lost if you don't check in it regularly. Right. I left the note to the security. I left the note to the security team in case there's something they need to be reached out to. But yeah, that's basically it. Yeah. So and okay, very good. Yeah, I'm surprised. I see. I would assume they prefer mailing lists, and I would guess they they will likely still continue. But but you, this is just a link that points people to a page that then says send to the mail send to the list or yeah the specific page has a disclaimer of addict added to not reach out to the security team for certification and stuff like that right yeah, that's basically the reason why i don't want to meet ma ma their mailing list there makes sense good okay any questions from others on on alexander's proposal okay next topic then thanks so i think this one are you ready to move it out of draft, Alex, so that we could we could go ahead and merge it? For oh, sure. Now, I guess press context is something that really should have a choice by the board because this is at some level a, a project organizational level dis decision. I propose that we ask here for board members, for uh, actually all participants, to give their approval that yes, we're okay with this conceptual change of press context. I know Oleg had said he was fine with it in separate email. Um, okay with a, a call for a vote here to be sure that we've got everybody agreed? Yes, that makes sense. Oh, sure. Okay, so let's let's get the votes then. All right, so votes from the board. So I'm plus one. Plus one. Okay. Alex, you're plus one, I presume? Yes, I'm plus one too. Okay, and votes from other participants here, Basel, Kevin, and Bruno, any yeah. objections? Plus one from all of you? Yep. Yep. All right, great. Thank you. Perfect, all right, thanks very much. Anything else on that action item? Next topic then, create and distribute election badges. Sorry, no progress for me and no intent to make progress in the next two to four weeks. Um, would anyone object if I just deleted this action item and said I'm not going to bother with it? Yes, it's not really important. <laughs> Great, deleting, okay, thanks. Next topic was easy CLA to be documented by Oleg and no progress there. I don't feel a grave concern that there's no progress, but any comments or insights from others? Are we at a point where we need to take this back from Oleg and put it on somebody else? I think we should just pick it up if there is actually someone who submits the CLA. Okay. But if I remember correctly, there have been a couple of people, maybe three during 2022, who actually signed the CLA. And these have been on corporate B. These have been on corporate. Um, yeah, the corporate one. So I don't think there's much interest from individuals to submit a CLA at this point. Great. Okay. So low risk continues, continues. Uh, the next action item is just a standing action item for me to create the agenda, empty agenda. I think I'm well enough practiced. I'm going to delete it. I'll keep doing it. If you catch me not doing it, I, I will take the action item then. Next one was pull request to update the Jenkins.io site to combine subprojects and SIGs into a single concept of working groups. I've not done it and it's not likely. This is this is mine. I accept it. I also need to update roadmap so it's it fits with me. Next topic, retire the Jen the Chinese Jenkins site. So this one, we had originally started with an action item, Oleg asked them, we've received the answer now. Rick has recommended that we redirect the Chinese pages to English equivalents. And Kevin, we would put it on Kevin, our docs officer to track this help desk ticket that is proposing to replace the Chinese pages with redirects to English pages. And I, I assume it's relatively straightforward, but 
like many things in the, that world of web pages and redirects, I could be very terribly wrong. Any questions there? Okay, next topic. So are we, are we blocked on anything or is this, um, or do we have all of the pieces in place that we think are, are needed to move forward? I think we have the pieces. The, the thing that we don't have is someone to do the work to make the changes. Because as far as I understand it, the Chinese site is under our control. So when I go to the Jenkins.io site here, I don't if think I, the Jenk I don't think the Chinese page is under our control. It's hosted in a separate GitHub re repository. Oh, okay. Unless you're a part of that organization, I'm not aware of, but it's in Jenkins dash Z uh, Jenkins dash, I don't know. Yeah, but so yeah, it's, it's here it's Z A organization. Right. It's like this. So but whatever repository is generating this content, it's still on a domain that we control. So we could redirect it somewhere else and stop using the content from that repository. I think so, right? I mean, I think we have control of the DNS or the this, we have control of this website, of this the web server that answers www.jenkins.io and therefore we should be able to redirect those pages. So is it a matter of finding the mapping of old page to new page is that the work that's that we don't actually have to do since it was since it was translation i don't even think there's a mapping needed it's rather any any url that includes zh slash at its root needs to have the zh slash removed and use the same url oh that's even easier than i thought it would be that's that's my that's my assumption anyway and i would if if that's not the case and they had done custom content I wouldn't trust that custom content anyway, because it's now at least two years out of date. So for me, I think it's just doing the redirect from ZH slash to root. Yeah, that seems pretty straightforward. Yeah, now, now I haven't checked to see where, let's see, this is the improve the page. Yeah, so, and in fact, this, the site page, the pages, are in a repository that we control, Jenkins Infra. So absolutely, we've got we've got end to end enough control of this thing to be able to 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 make the change. We just need someone to do the change. Did that address your question, Basil? Yeah, no, that was that was good context because I wasn't sure how far along we were, but it seems right. like the biggest concern of mine, which was producing the mapping, is actually not a concern at all. So that's great. Right. So it's it's basically, I think we need someone to read, we need a redirect from www.jenkins.io slash zh slash to that. And, and accepting the consequence there is, if they did custom content, it's now hidden in a GitHub repository that we have. Great. Anything else on the retire the Chinese Jenkins site? Okay, next topic then was archive the governance meeting notes, and I have made no progress on this. Sorry, Gavin's done the work, and I've got got more, more work to do. Uh, last item was build monitor view plugin. Basil, anything you want to report there? Um, I've contacted the GitHub organization admins through a help desk ticket. So it's just a matter of someone with the appropriate access executing the transfer. Great. Okay. So, so we're now in execution mode on this one. Great. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thanks very, very much. Any other action items or action item topics that we need to discuss? Okay. Next topic was this is a this is a a reminder for me and an experience thing. So in the Jenkins Code of Conduct, there is text that says board members are responsible for clarifying and enforcing standards of acceptable behavior. 
it was not too long ago that I read this for the very first time and thought, oh, I'm a board member. I have a responsibility here. And so my reminder was then became pertinent when we had some rather rather harsh comments on a on a, a Gitter channel, and I stepped in and said, as a board member, I am acting on this responsibility and saying that you need to be aware of code of conduct. And the user responded very positively. Oh, you're right. So sorry. And then we had a good conversation. So for me, it was a it was a good reminder that hey, as a board member, it's okay that I I know that we have a code of conduct and we expect people to adhere to it. Now, if when you look in, when the rest of you look in Gitter chat and you see that and you have a different opinion of it, you are certainly welcome to tell me that different opinion or say, oh no, that, that should have been handled very differently. I'm open to that as well. No, I, I, I've also seen this conversation and I was uh, yeah, only on phone available, so I, I couldn't uh, really answer on this topic as well. But I think it was a really good reaction from you. And uh, I think it was a really a good discussion afterwards. So it was, yeah, maybe sometimes you just need to say a simple thing and then everything is working okay. Right. And and that's now, now there have been other cases where, where I, there was a case some six or nine months ago where I, I noted someone that they were, they were, in, I thought they were in violation of code of conduct. And I didn't initially cite that I was a member of the board. I just said, I think you're, you're, you're out of line. I was, I was a little too gentle and they came back with sort of more harsh phrasing. And I, I then put on my lawyer mode and said, I am a member of the board. I am enforcing the code of conduct. And, and that was, that didn't go nearly as well as this one did, where I started right off by saying, Hey, look, I'm a board member and I'm, I'm noting you're, you're, you're not behaving the way we want. Great. Anything else on that topic? Any Alex, for instance, you're, you're frequently on these kind of interactions, any places where you've seen problems or wanted to highlight anything? Uh, no, not much. If I'm interacting with the guitar channels, people are mostly friendly and have a friendly and nice tone. At least I didn't see anything disrespectful, harsh, or I don't know, even rude comments. So yeah. Great. Super. All right, thank you. Next topic then was there's a JIRA change that is coming. So Atlassian has stated that their move in general for open source projects is to move them from being self-hosted to being hosted by Atlassian. And for most, most projects, that makes a lot of sense. If you've got a relatively small JIRA installation, if you've got uh, a reasonable number of users having Atlassian hosted is better for the open source project. The Jenkins project is somewhat distinct in that sense because we have over a hundred thousand users on our Jira installation, and we've got a long history of use of that with important security procedures, etc. Well, Atlassian thankfully has approved our continued continued use of that system even after February 2024, and. Linux Foundation plans to continue hosting us. They're going through some detailed discussions about what it means to make this transition because on their side at Linux Foundation, they will need to do some effort um, to, to get us to keep hosting us this way. I'll keep the board uh, aligned and aware so that you, you're informed as things happen, but I've got an open help desk ticket with the Linux Foundation and they've confirmed that they've got access to the information they need from Atlassian. Any questions there? Wasn't there a blog post uh, planned? Oh, oh that's, thank you. Yes, thank you, Mark. Good, good point. Mark's proposed blog post draft has started but not finished. And the reason it hasn't finished is I sent it to Atlassian for approval. They said, it's only two paragraphs. Do you want to say some more stuff? And I realized, oh, yeah, I should say some more things. And so I started gathering data, Mark, to gather more interesting data, more data to make the, the blog post more interesting. And so I've got some more writing to do. Things like 
hey, how many how many issues are there and how many users are there? And those kind of sort of facts and figures, I think, will help people be more interested. Oh, and so once we get write the blog post, uh, once we have final details from LFX, because they may have to schedule some downtime in order to do the transition from, from the current configuration to whatever the new configuration is. Any other topics or questions on the JIRA license change? Okay, next topic then was CDF topics. So one of the items is that the technical oversight committee for the CDF meets I believe it's monthly, and they've asked their contributing projects to present status reports. Uh, they've got a status report already scheduled for March, and I believe for April, and I tentatively put us on the agenda for May. Uh, my intent was I'll create the presentation, share it with board members, invite you to um, comment and share it, actually share it with this group. Uh, invite comments, corrections, et cetera, and then we'll present it. If others would like to be part of the presentation or would be like to be co-presenters, I'm happy to have that as well. Okay, next topic then was during the last technical oversight committee meeting, they noted that one of the facilities that we use in the Jenkins project, this DevStats facility, it was created originally by Linux Foundation, um, will eventually be replaced. And they've started a working group to be sure that the Linux Foundation knows what things we need so that we don't lose information as a result of this transition from the DevStats thing to the new Linux Foundation Insights program of data collection. Um, I'm involved in that. Others may be involved as time goes on. Any questions there? Mm, does Jean-Marc know about that? He does. I hope so. Okay, yes, cool. he Go does. Fine. Yeah, so just so everybody's aware, this is the kind of data that this shows. This is two years of Jenkins contributor counts across the entire set of Jenkins repositories. And the bottom line is companies where they make guesses which company you're from. The top line is individuals. And it's fascinating that they can gather this kind of data from public commits. And it, it helps us decide, hey, are we being effective? We got really concerned back here in December when the numbers plummeted, right? When the numbers dropped. And we're glad to see that the numbers came back. There are other charts like this that use the data from GitHub to help people understand how an open source project is doing. All right, next topic then was on community activity. So here we've got an ongoing project to try to reduce the bandwidth used by repo.jenkinsci.org. Um, what it's been doing is Costing, it's costing a lot of bandwidth to its sponsor, Art and JFrog. And they've asked us, hey, please, can you find a way to reduce how much bandwidth you're using? So the infrastructure teams created the artifact caching pro proxy, and it has done a really great job. We were previously three of the top five consumers were Jenkins owned CI servers. And with the caching proxy, we're now completely off that list. So good win. Now there are still other things that need to be changed. Like we've got a misuse that's happening at an IP address in China that we can't figure out how to get them to stop. We see the pattern where we just haven't found a way to find them to ask them, please stop asking over and over and over again for the same files. We continue to do log file analysis thanks to a, a brilliant little tool that Basel created that uploads JFrog log records to an SQL database. So I can sit there and ask SQL questions about the usage of the system. It's, it's a treat. 
So be aware that future more changes are likely coming. Uh, more changes are likely coming, uh, but we'll continue making progress. Any questions on that one? Are they, um, did JFrog give us any update about adding the block IP uh, feature? Do you, yeah, I think so they were far, work, no. They were possibly working on that or? Right, so no final answer on, on blocking specific IP addresses. Uh, I'll ping them again today because yeah. that would that would be the single biggest gain if we could block this exact IP address. I see. So uh, I, I will ask them. Uh, yes, until they change it, but <laughs> well, and, <laughs> and that'll give us a few weeks. Yeah. Well, and, and that was why the that was why the the JFrog people said, "Hey, it's not even worth it because mm -hmm. this could be they it may be that they'll immediately change it, but." Looking at the pattern of use, I'm not sure, but what it's not really just a computer, not some something more than that. And somebody's just doing things that don't make any sense on that computer. <laughs> okay. All right. Other topics we've got um, Alyssa Tong and I will be at in Los Angeles end of this week for a, an open source conference, the Southern California Linux Expo. And the CDF Jenkins Awards nominations are open. Congratulations, Alex, for your nomination. It's fun to read those nominations. That's a thank you very much for contributions. Any other topics for today's meeting? All right, then I'm going to go ahead and call an end here. Thanks very, very much. Recording should be available in 24 to 48 hours.